everyone, welcome back to NeuroSciQ, where we'll be exploring another cutting edge study that focuses on how infection with a common foodborne parasite is associated with increased brain cancer risk. If you want to know more after this video, I highly suggest that you access the original manuscript entitled Toxoplasma Gondii Infection and the Risk of Adult Glioma from Two Perspective Studies. It was published in the International Journal of Cancer in January 2021 by an American team. Let's break down the study by answering four key questions. First, what are gliomas? They are the most common malignant brain tumor and form the glial tissue, which supports neurons in the central nervous system. Fortunately, this cancer is very rare, with an approximate incidence of 300,000 new cases a year globally. Sadly, gliomas are incurable and very aggressive, so there is a five-year survival rate of only 5%. However, there is lots of ongoing research to improve outcomes for this disease. So now let's talk about Toxoplasma gondii, or T. gondii for short. It's a highly common parasite that's definitively hosted by cats. In fact, 20 to 50% of the global population is thought to have been exposed. Importantly, exposed does not mean infected, and infection is very rare. Toxoplasmosis results from infection with this parasite, and most individuals are asymptomatic and don't know they have it. Some patients, particularly if they are immunocompromised, may develop flu-like symptoms and more serious complications. It's important to emphasize that although Toxoplasma gondii is a com common parasite, toxoplasmosis is very unusual, and infection with this parasite is very unusual in healthy individuals. So let's talk about how someone can get infected with T. gondii. Like many foodborne diseases, the most common form of infection is through eating raw or undercooked meat from infected animals. Properly killing food kills the parasite. Since cats are a common host, handling cat litter that contains feces uh, from an infected kitty is another way of contracting an infection, though it is also unusual. It's also possible, though unlikely, to become infected through an organ transplant or in utero. Finally, let's talk about how infection with T. gondii could lead to glioma. It's crucial to remember here that the hypotheses are theoretical. So it's well known that T. gondii parasitism creates cysts in the brain. Consequent immune system activation can lead to chronic inflammation, which is an established risk factor for cancer development. Infection with T. gondii also disrupts some key biochemical processes in the host cell. And if you're interested, I would recommend checking out the paper for the exact pathways. Here's a key fact that you need to know to understand the next part of the paper. And so when, an, an, when a person is infected with T. gondii, they make antibodies to T. gondii to fight the infection. These antibodies can be detected in their blood for the rest of their lives. Conversely, if T. gondii antibodies are detected in a person's blood, it's very likely that they've been infected with the parasite. The investigations pooled data from two large-scale studies that collected blood for apparently healthy individuals and tracked their long-term health income health outcomes. Out of these studies that recruited tens of thousands of people combined, 360 people developed glioma. What makes this spe study special and different from previous work is that it is prospective. So investigators can access blood from before the participants develop brain cancer, allowing a more compelling analysis. They tested these individuals as well as 397 match controls for T. gondii antibodies, and importantly, the controls did not develop any cancer. Here you have it, the crux of the paper. The team found a statistically significant association between exposure to T. gondii and risk of developing glioma. They used conditional logic regression, logistic reg regression to calculate the odds ratio sh shown below. CS, CPSII, and C, and Janus refer to the two separate studies where the data is from. So there are separate ratios for each. To put these numbers into context, the investigators found that people in the CPSII and C study who were infected with T. gondii had almost three times the risk of developing glioma compared to those who were not infected. The Janus study found a smaller but still compelling association, 1.3 times more likely. Let's end on a question. How do we interpret these findings? It's really important to keep these results in context. Remember, T. gondii infections are very rare and can be easily present, prevented. Just cook your meat properly and follow proper food safety and hygiene procedures. As the scientists who conducted this work repeat multiple times in their paper, this is only a preliminary study. Much more work needs to be done 
but a far greater number of participants confirm these results. However, if these results are verified, reducing exposure to T. Gandhi could be an effective way of reducing the incidence of this devastating cancer. Thanks for watching.